hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, Naomi dicked about on a ship that was about to fall off a cliff, like you do. It's just a regular old day for Naomi. I, I, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe she did that, and she didn't just, I don't know, land closer to where the mission objective was. I, Naomi, Naomi, girl, you crazy. You crazy sometimes. Kerr. A dry, desolate planet, Kerr is temperate but supports little life above the microscopic level. Its Earth-like temperatures and gravity make it an appealing place to build habitation hideaways, attracting Batarian slavers and criminals who can't afford more luxurious safe houses on other planets. Its forgiving nitrogen-helium atmosphere makes EVAs possible with a minimal amount of equipment. A breathing mask and warm clothing is usually sufficient. Mining and other legitimate parties on, and other legitimate activities are few and far between on Kerr. The planet's crust is largely free of precious metals, instead producing kilometers upon kilometers of, dolo of dolometic limestone, calcite, and gypsum. Alliance Bulletin. Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Orbital distance, 2.2 AU. Orbital period, 3.3 Earth years. Radius, 6,420 kilometers. Day length, 61.7 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 1.2 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 4 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.1 G. And you are rich! Probe away. And if the slavers would like to stop me... Launching probe. ...from stealing their shit... They can come and try, see what happens to them. We might not shoot them on sight. We would. We would. Naomi does not like slavery. Probe launched. Now then. Oh, hello. Launching probe. Okay, down to good, but still. Oh, hello. Launching probe. As I think, there's always, there's always something to loot. There's always a little something, something to loot. Okay, there we go. Good stuff. And you at the back there. Excuse me, there we go. Bothros. A rock and ice planet, Bothros is home to a scientific curiosity. Evidence of a primate-like spacefaring civilization was found frozen in its equatorial ice, ranging from melted fragments of metal to preserved remains of the creatures still wearing suits for extravehicular travel uh, activity. Further exploration revealed that their habitation centers were vaporized by orbital bombardment from railgun-like weapons hitting with a force of approximately 120 kilotons of TNT. Only those that fled or happened to be away from the habitats were preserved in the ice where they died of asphyxiation. This unknown species did not come from Asteria, but scientific teams are looking for evidence that they visited there. It is difficult to believe they would colonize a frozen rock like Bothros and ignore a lush garden world. Their world of origin is also a mystery. Alliance Bulletin, Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Orbital distance, 8.5 AU. Orbital period, 24.8 Earth years. Radius, 7,191 kilometers. Day length, 51.0 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 142 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.5 G. And it seems... Launching probe. It seems the Reapers have been at it again. Oh, yep, you're coming with me. I know I've made this exact comment before, but it, it might not have been the Reapers. It might have been someone else, but no, no orbital bombardment, blame the Reapers. Launching probe. It's always the Reapers. Orbital bombardment, we found this long dead species, it probe rained away. on your birthday, Reapers. 
The Reapers are responsible for everything bad in this world. That is a fact. Oh, hello there. Probe launched. Don't mind if I do. And now we'll we'll leave that one behind. That one's not good enough. Oh, but you are. Launching probe. As are you. Probe away. Only seven probes left. Let's let's see if we can use up two. It's it's a little bit of element zero, so let's take it. Launching probe. Give me oh yeah, right there. Probe away. Okay, fantastic. Okay, and that is Hecate done. Let's fuel up all of the probes, if you please. Excuse me, there we go. Okay, and two hot plots. Okay, okay, looks like there are four systems here. Good stuff. Aegis. A hydrogen helium gas giant, Aegis was the site of an unparalleled cosmic event roughly 1.8 million years ago. An extrasolar body about 200 square kilometers in size was drawn into Aegis's gravity well and struck the Jovian planet, blasting enough dust and material into orbit to create a ring. An urban legend has grown over this event. The story goes that if the extrasolar body, usually called a comet, was unaffected by the gravity well of Aegis, it would have coincided with an orbit of Trident and created an extinction-level event on that planet. Prevailing scientific opinion holds that this is an exaggeration at best. Orbital distance, 4.5 AU. Orbital period? Orbital priod? <laughs> Orbital priod, 9.6 Earth years. Radius, 53,682 kilometers. Day length, 11.6 Earth hours. It's, it's good to know the orbital priod. We always learn the orbital period, but no, I, I want to learn the orbital priod. Probe away. And, uh, and now I'll leave you. You're, you're not good enough, I'll leave you behind. You can come with me, though. Probe away. I was about to say I'm not I'm not expecting any any major spikes here, but that that was quite nice. That was quite tasty. Ooh. Yes, please. Probe. That's right, Aegis. You proved me wrong. You proved me wrong about the big spikes. And, okay, yeah, good stuff. And a yoink. Machaira. A small rock planet, Machaira's thin atmosphere and high albedo keeps it from being much hotter than it is. The crust is high in sodium oxide, giving the planet a whitish tinge. Orbital distance, 0.5 AU. Radius, 4,733 kilometers. Day length, 34.9 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, 206 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.5 G. Ooh, lots of craters here. Launching probe. And we shall take from them. The craters shall give up their goodies. Ooh. Probe launched. Launching probe. God, we, we really do have silly amounts of minerals. Probe launched. I'm not even sure what Naomi would do with all of these minerals. I think maybe maybe she plans on selling them. Probe away. She never really got over the loss of her bank account. She never really got over that loss. So maybe maybe she plans on selling all of these to try and earn back her money. Probe launched. You do have to wonder what happened to all of that. I mean, would Naomi have a will? Probe launched. I don't know who, like, I, I don't know who she'd name in her will. I mean, maybe, 
maybe if any of her, um, of the members of her team from Akuz, if any of them had kids, I could see her leaving money to them. Trident. A human-dominated world with over 95% of its surface covered by salt water. Trident is home to a dazzling array of life. The oceans are filled with creatures ranging from tiny bivalves to mammoth vertebrates, unequaled even by Earth's whales and ichthyosaurs. Small archipelagos create what little land there is, and its valuable real estate is fought over constantly. Underwater extraction operations have recovered a number of valuable minerals from the ocean floor, including iridium, uranium, and dust form element zero. A largely lawless world, Trident is home to a rogues gallery of unethical corporations exploiting the resources of the planet and actual rogues, criminals, slavers, and mercenaries working the shadows. Travel advisory. Due to extreme weather conditions, all traffic to the surface is grounded. Trident Spaceport Control predicts this condition will persist until the end of hurricane season. Colony founded 2144 CE. Population 6,800,000. Capital New Custo. Orbital distance 2.0 AU. Orbital period 2.8 Earth years. Radius, 6,905 kilometers. Day length, 27.6 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 1.4 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 27 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.1 G. Well, yeah, as, as I was saying, like, if any of the members of her squad on a coups had kids, I could see her leaving money to them. Because aside from that, like, Naomi doesn't really have anyone. She's not going to give money to her mom. Her mom may not even be alive for all she knows. She doesn't really have any friends outside of the military. She doesn't have kids. She doesn't have a long-term partner. So I, I don't know who who would be named in Naomi's one. Maybe, oh, that's a thought. She, she'd probably also give uh, a large chunk of it to charities. Probe away to help people like her, you know, kids in gangs who were growing up in, in you know, impoverished areas. Broke away. Yeah, I, th I think that's, that's who Naomi would leave her money to. Any, any relatives Broke launched. From, her squad, from her squad on a coups and um, probably to charity. Like that's, that's really all she has to give to. She doesn't have anyone personal Broke to herself. Away. Launched. A yoink. Okay, and down to Madara, okay. Okay, and there we are. Hell, uh, I was about to say, where's where's the other one? Hiding. Hiding in the light of the sun. Talaria. A rock with all traces of atmosphere burned away. Talaria orbits the star Hoplos at a blistering pace every 36 days. Though tidally locked, even its twilight belt and shaded side are too barren to support life. With so many resources on its sister planet, Trident, Talaria has been largely ignored by the galactic surveying community. Orbital distance, 0.1 AU. Orbital period, 0.1 Earth years. Radius, 3,569 kilometers. Day length, 0.1 Earth years. Tidal lock. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, 908 Celsius, mean. Surface gravity, 0.2 G. Okay, and you're good. Lovely. Launched. Don't mind me whilst I steal all of your shit. Oh, yeah, you're very nice. Probe launched. And anyone else? I, I believe, I believe the last firewalker mission was the um it was the actual prothean site so wouldn't, wouldn't any of you minerals like to come view a prothean site that sounds like fun there may be good shit there yeah you want to come along and go on why not launched okay lovely jubbly 
Alrighty then. Two coppice. Anomaly detected. Makaira's largest moon, Coppice, is a desolate place with an extremely thin atmosphere. Its crust is largely silica-based, and there are no signs of water. Like its parent planet, its high albedo keeps it from being a total of a total inferno, and when occluded by Makaira, its temperatures can be nearly tolerable. Its low gravity can easily be countered by a vehicular or personal mass effect field for comfortable exploration. Orbital distance 0 0.5, 0.55 AU. Radius 1,733 kilometers. Day length 21.3 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure trace. Surface temperature 51 Celsius. Surface gravity 0.1 G. Now then, show me where is this landing site? Where am I going? Probe launched. Something on our sensors. Anomaly detected. Perothean artifacts detected on planet's surface. Artifact site is protected by a powerful energy barrier. Scans detect muted mechanical signatures consistent with hidden automated defenses. Okay. Yet there's there's still been no sign of um Doctor's case and Alloy. Probe away. We haven't seen any sign of them. So I'm wondering if they'll be at this final site. You know, we'll finally be able to track them down. Again, Naomi Naomi thinks that she's protecting them from Cerberus. She doesn't realise that they are with Cerberus. Miranda's keeping that very hush-hush. But yeah, considering we've been, you know, following their trail all this time, I think that Naomi would want to meet them. You know, put put faces to the names. Oh, yes, please. Probe away. Lovely. Okay. Okay, good stuff. Let's land. And again, Miranda is hiding stuff so you can come along. And... <laughs> Automated defenses. So let's bring Morden. Satan. Okay, let's. And again, we must remember. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, I don't think anything is shooting at me. I think that was. I think that was the the Mako, not the Mako. Excuse me, the Hammerhead making those noises. Yeah, we have to remember. Kinetic barrier strength reduced. We have to remember that the Hammerhead has the defensive strength of tissue paper. So let's be on the lookout for anything that might want to harm us. Also, thank you. Okay, let's let's follow this one first. Oh no, no. Mm. Oh hello. Piss off. There we go, good night. Can we see... Oh, G Jesus, Jesus, excuse me, excuse me. Not cool. Let's look. Is there any... Okay, well this... No, no, dickhead. Dickhead, no. Yeah, this, this looks like a way to get up there, okay. Oh, 
hello. Don't mind if I do. And, uh, yeah, hello down there. E excuse me, I would... There we go. Yeah, I can't. I can't get you from this angle. go excellent oh no we're smoking we're smoking yeah i i was warned correctly this thing does have the uh the defensive capabilities of tissue paper okay Boost just fine. Oh my god, there are so many of them, there are so many of them. So let's be fantastic. And I think the last one, yeah, it's over there. Excuse me. We'll, we'll deal with these. Can I excuse me? There we go. Done and dusted. Yeah, I think, yeah, we need to go around. Let's head around this way. No. Bad drones, no thank you. I do. Oh shit. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. That was lucky. That could have been very bad if they had started shooting me earlier. somewhere else but it doesn't matter Naomi. Well, I mean, can, can you really blame her? She can't. She can't drive. She she never got. <laughs> she never got her driver's license. Okay. Okay. Let's 
see. What do we have here? Okay, we have an insect. That's nice. Okay, we've got a body. Oh, dear. Hello? I'm not seeing any enemies on the map. Who are you? I mean, that, that looks like Blue Sun's armor to me, so this, this could just be a random mercenary. Although in that case, how did you get it? I, I would assume maybe maybe Case and Oloy had some mercenaries helping them. The site is spectacular. Time, however, has proven to be the real enemy. Even with those blue sun thugs hired to protect the dig site, we barely managed to erect the shield before the Geth arrived. How do they know our movements almost before we do? Am I beaming my thoughts directly to them? I must find out how they're doing this. I shall ask Dr. O'Loy for whatever help he can provide. Oh, now, if I remember correctly, in one of the, um, in one of the mission recaps, or in one of the emails that we got, I think there was some mention of, um, the MSV Rosalie was beaming out instructions. It seemed that there was a mole on the inside. I... Hello, are you our friend? Are you guiding us? like this I don't I don't like the strange noise I don't like the tight corners I trust none of this Okay, so Aloy. Aloy was the geth inside, man. I, oh. I mean, why though? Why work with the geth? <laughs> Thank you for the money. I. <sighs> okay, so that's, that's what happened to Aloy. But. <laughs> Where is Case? That is the question. Mm. You know what? I, I only have about two minutes left on my timer, so I'm going to bring this episode to a close right here. And let's read some codex entries. Uh, excuse me. Lady Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was the target of several terrorist attacks over its 210-year lifetime, but in 2096, a motley group called Freedoms First finally brought the statue down. Protesting the induction of Canada and Mexico into the United North American States, the New York chapter of Freedoms First wanted a symbol that they thought uh, that they would secede from this new union if necessary. In the early morning hours of November 1st, they smuggled small arms and 15.5 and tons of high explosive onto Liberty Island. Shooting or capturing the guards, they planted the explosives under the pedestal and detonated them at 7.37am. The statue crashed to the ground in pieces, unexpectedly killing four of the Freedom First terrorists. The remaining team members were apprehended after long manhunts, but the damage was done. The outrage at the secessionists kindled the fires of the Second American Civil War. On November 4th, President Caitlin Chung signed an executive order to rebuild the statue. Approximately one-tenth of the steel beams and copper plating from the destroyed statue was recovered and used in creating the new one. The original's head was put on display at the National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. It remained there for two years until the Battle of Washington. During heavy shelling by secessionist fire, the head disappeared. A new statue was completed in 2101, and the fate of the original pieces was left for speculation and pulp novels. Interest flared up briefly in 2159, when photos surfaced of the head in the cargo hold of a star freighter, but by that time, human media were far more concerned with the future. 
In the face of humanity spreading out among the thousands of new planets, a statue titled Liberty Enlightening the World seemed small and quaint by comparison. And then Planet Beckenstein. More glittering than diamonds, more expensive than surgery, is how travel agents describe this planet behind closed doors. Given the opportunity to colonize planets after the first contact war, the Systems Alliance chose Beckenstein to be their trading arm, producing goods to be sold on the nearby citadel. Cracking the vast galactic marketplace proved difficult. The first human products sold on novelty alone, then lack of demand hit Beckenstein's economy hard. Only in the second generation of colonists did the planet find a sustainable niche in high quality entertainment and luxury goods. Once brand awareness sunk in, sunk in aliens flocked to Beckenstein's many spaceports. The planet today boasts more millionaires and billionaires per capita than any other human colony. Though its crime tends to be white collar and non-violent, Beckenstein is not without its dark side. Both its suicide rate and inflation are extremely high compared to other worlds. Unemployment is artificially low because few people immigrate to the expensive planet without having a job lined up, and the cost of living is so great that unemployed workers typically leave for kinder planets after just a few months. Those who stay see themselves as tougher, sharper, and more skillful than the rest as well as capable of getting respect and employment on any lesser planet. As a popular song says, if you can make it on the beck, you've gotten by the neck. And the veteran, Zaid Secrets. M451 Firestorm. The M451 Firestorm flamethrower is a product of human ingenuity, ruthlessness, and industrial espionage. Its origin dates back to the 2160s, when human colonists to new planets used flamethrowers to clear vegetation or ice. The fuels performed erratically on planets with extremely cold temperatures and differing air compositions from Earth. Realizing this could be a problem for military units, Systems Alliance intelligence operatives stole the Torian design for the Heerus flamethrower, a battle-tested workhorse that functioned in nearly every environment. The result was the firestorm, an anti-personnel and anti-armor flame unit that can accept a variety of liquid fuels. The Turian design used low-octane hydrocarbons thickened with dentra oil, which is taken from large marine animals similar to Earth's whales. Humans then reverse-engineered a synthetic composite that, uh, with almost identical properties that could be fabricated from heavy weapon fuel cells using an Omnitool. The result is a sticky spray that burns at approximately 1,600 degrees Celsius, a less intense fire than plasma weapons, but covering a significantly wider target area. Adding to the trauma is the choking smoke produced by the spray, and if the target's armor is breached, the fire quickly consumes the oxygen within. The firestorm may not be the most efficient weapon in the Systems Alliance arsenal, but the sheer ugliness of how it kills ensures it is the most feared. Lovely. Alrighty then, in the next episode, will we learn what happened to Case? find out then. So please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.